Beach and what's it like in DC? Um, you know, it, it's been a very wet and not great spring. Uh, um, and it's an, it's an, it's sort of weird to be here in the city uh, because it, it's very uh, um, empty. Uh, and uh, then all of a sudden you'll see a whole bunch of people like running through the park or something. Yeah. Um, and you're like, how, how is all of that working? Uh, so I, I prefer when I'm up here actually to spend time out at my home on the Chesapeake Bay in Annapolis. But, but you've got me here today. We've got some work to do uh, in town. So. When you're at your place, which you've got a few boats up at the, the place in Chesapeake Bay, right? Uh, yes, I, I, I do boats uh, that I run myself, which I try to remind the crew that I'm still capable of. So, <laughs> well, let's get onto the boats then. Let's. I mean, because you <laughs> you've got you've got quite the fleet. It's fair to say, um, your current big boat, formerly yes. uh, Rasselas, renamed mm -hmm. by you last year. Yes. renamed Broadwater, and now she's at Royal Houseman undergoing refit right now. So how's that going? Well, it's a pisser to uh, have gone through this and not have a big boat to go um, uh, quarantine or, or isolate on. Yeah. Uh, so that, that's first. Um, but, but work, I'm, I'm happy to say, continues. And although uh, we have um, certainly impacts to the schedule the boat will deliver you know at some point uh this summer um and uh, we'll we'll hopefully be able to enjoy it and it's gonna be it is gonna be great um it, it's it's annoying not to have a big boat right now although i i i'm happy not to have two big boats so yeah yeah and so had the boat been ready had, i know that what it was never due to be delivered say in February or March, perhaps when uh, you might have had the opportunity to isolate on it, but had it been ready, would you have gone to the boat and spent this whole time on the boat? Oh yes, yeah, I would have, I would have. Um, uh, and I know I have friends who have done just the same. Um, uh, though the Caribbean, uh, depending upon your registry and, um, and where you're from, uh, they have uh, been friendly or not friendly on you uh, joining uh, their waters of various islands, but St. Thomas, uh, obviously, as an American territory, is someplace where you can kind of isolate and um, have uh, have peace and quiet and, and anchor out, which is what we love to do. So this this wouldn't uh, disappoint me, you know, being at anchor for for thirty or sixty days. It would drive the crew probably nuts, but uh, okay. being away uh, on the water is what it's all about for us. So yeah, I've, I've read some accounts of um, and been told about some how perilous kind of journeys, like getting kicked out of one port and get, get, get kicked out another. You've got to be chased out of the Caribbean, effectively, when everyone, everything started locking down. Um, yeah. Uh, in fact, I was uh, I had chartered uh, Vertigo, the big sailboat, uh, uh, and was on it for my son's spring break uh, when this all began to. Uh, get very serious and um we kind of bounced around from one place to another uh and finally uh, they made us aware in st kitts that you know uh the airport was going to close that evening so we were welcome to stay uh but we didn't uh we didn't know when we could leave otherwise so we decided to um to to fly home and uh and, and left the charter early Oh, that's a shame. So, how long did you manage to get on board? We were on board for a week, so it it, it was it was nice and and, and uh, again being gone and being on the water, though weird and removed, uh, was was lovely given the stress um, that was going on uh, uh, here in the in the states and elsewhere. It's just been terrible. Yeah, yeah, it has. What's going on? So. Back to raw water quickly. So, what yeah. what what big changes are you making to the boat? So, uh, when I purchased the boat, um, you know, we we had to decide how far we were going in the project, and uh, what what 
was needed most clearly to me was an, a stern extension that, that modernized and opened what is a very lovely boat to the sea. Um, now, that required um, undoing what many uh, aficionados would describe as a lovely rump <laughs> or slight canoe stern on the back of the boat. Um, uh, but unfortunately, that is what it is. I, I had some um, her rump thing from bedship uh, on, oh no, and I'm like, yeah, no, it's gotta happen. So uh, we have extended the boat um, and in that extension, she will have a, a, a beach club, um, nothing like some of the, uh, the yachts that are launched today, but certainly uh, a much more livable approach um, and, and easy approach to the sea. And then a huge swim platform and, uh, all the, you know, the various gadgets and gizwizzes that go along with that. And was that partly driven by charter, obviously, because that's almost, a, that, I mean, you've got to have that now if you want to be a successful charter. Yes. yes, so we tow, uh, we tow large tenders uh, as well. And the way the stern worked before, it would have been dangerous for the crew um, to, to have the boat come in and then get on it and start after it was being towed, um, by, by this layperson's eyes anyway. And uh, so that was, that was part of it. Um, and then just freshening and, and making more modern uh, this boat, which was created for an owner who really hadn't had a boat before. He built this sort of um, from, from uh, an idea and uh, it was one of the first boats that Hank DeVries sold on his own when his, when his father sort of handed it things over and put him out on the road. So there's a lot of attachments um, from a lot of people who I very much respect uh, in, in the industry. And, um, and it has been well cared for, which has been fantastic. The original owner owned it for 10 years uh, before he took delivery of effectively its twin on steroids. So um, we have we have taken a very lovely, kind thing, uh, and and I think made her better and fresher. Um, and then there's some some state of the art things we have put in a completely uh, state of the art rhodium all glass uh, Actis bridge, no paper, no nothing. Um, so it'll be fun to see people come on the boat, walk on to the bridge, thinking that they're going to get one thing and get um, something else. There will be some of that. Um, screwing with the mind, which I always enjoy. So. <laughs> and that's a bit of a change from your previous Broadwater, because she was formerly Blue Moon. Yes. And the bridge on that boat was um, of its era. The rest of the boat was very, well, you know, classy, contemporary, but kind of a throwbacky, kind of mad many kind of yeah. vibe to it as well, which was, it hung together really well. But then you walked into the bridge and it was all, dark cherry and you know uh, you know it was back in the 80s almost but it was quite charming in its right. own way. yes so i always like to leave you know uh, a little homage to the uh, to to the sort of historical era that these things were born in um, it, it's it's akin to buying a, a a beautiful home that needs restored but has great bones uh, and and you want to switch some things around and, and it, 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 it can happen and that it's a platform you can invest in and it's gonna hold together. Um, and, uh, and that's the lovely thing about, about these great and amazing uh, ships. So the, the, the kind of fed ship aficionados have not terribly happy that you're changing the lines of this classic fed ship, but, but you are, uh, you know, a huge fan of the classic fed ship as a breed. I mean, you've owned, how many have you had now? This is the third one. This is my third, yeah. Yeah, so what, what is it about these classic fed ships that attracts you? Well, um, like I said, uh, it, it's nice to be able to purchase something that you know what you're getting and, and the underlying quality provided its provenance and that it's been taken care of. Um, uh, and the ability to, to change these things and make them more modern, um, it, but still maintain 
the fact that they're timeless. Um, and, and so yes, that's quality and, and yes, that's engineering. Um, but uh, they're a very special breed of boat uh, and, um, and, and they improve with time. Mm. Um, and so it's been, it's been fun. I've, I've had, uh, 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 you know, the, the blessing to own them uh, and, and sell them successfully. So that's also been fun. There hasn't been any bloodbath so far. Um, and, and yes, uh, you know, this, my buying this boat was, was actually Hank DeVries idea. We were in Monaco at the Fed ship dinner and, uh, I brought it up and he said, let's do it. And I was like, Oh God, I got to call the bankers. And so we went to work. So, but you sold the former Broadwater sold quite quickly, didn't it? You weren't left with two boats for very long, were you? No. Uh, although the prior Broadwater, uh, sold in 14 days. So th 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 um, that was very quick. In fact, I mean, it was sort of crazy. Uh, uh, so of course I put the last one on the market and it, it sold in about, you know, a typical uh, amount of time, four or five months. Uh, it takes a long, long time to, uh, you know, to get through this, the, the sales process. Um, although the gentleman who bought it uh, laid eyes upon it and owned it within 10 days. So it happened very, very quickly once, once it found its new, uh, its, its new owner or patron. <laughs> <laughs> There's not many families of boats that have such a following. Maybe classic Reavers, uh, but there's not many others really are there, but a classic Fed ship really is uh, like almost a, a status symbol also, but there is a, a real fan club, a real love of this type of boat. Uh, y yes, I, th there is, um, you know, and it's, it's, it's gonna be interesting to see, uh, you know, as the world has matured and boats have gotten ever bigger, um, uh, Hank says uh, the perfect 100 meter fed ship is 250 meters, one in the Caribbean and one in the Mediterranean. Um, and so, w will these enormous boats, uh, they, they certainly will hold up over time, but I don't relish uh, or uh, want a 100 meter boat. Um, and, and so, it'll be interesting to see uh, what happens with the large boats over time. Uh, and uh, I think you're seeing today people really understand what it is to be one with the, the water and say that 45 to 55 meter uh, size range. Um, mm. Well, yeah, also uh, obviously the, the, the LOA of your boat is heavily influenced by your cruising area because if you want to go to certain areas, you can't have you know, a 100 meter boat. It's a silly decision because then you're miles offshore, for instance. So, we're seeing more support boats being sold, for instance. So you that, run with a small size ship and a support boat. That's correct. You know, I, I, I wish um, everyone who got into to boating, uh, somehow all of this knowledge was transferred to us before we would make mistakes. But we all make them. Um, and, uh, oh, oh, shoot, the boat can't go here which is my favorite spot uh, because of X, or uh, I want to go there, but I, I can't, um, you know. So you begin to have the things that you check off to make sure that uh, it satisfies um, your, your passion. The last boat was purpose built by, by its owner uh, to cruise the Bahamas, and, uh, and we did, um, and it's quite something seeing Fed ship go into compass uh, in, 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 in the Bahamas uh, because it's something that shouldn't uh, by all rights happen because they draw a lot more than, than is allowed, except for this boat, of course. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll, we'll make some adjustments because we won't be able to go to compass in this, this new boat, but um, you have a larger tender to take you around and it all, it all seems to hang together and work. The most important part is that you're on the water enjoying it. Correct. So the, the new shall be 56 meters, is that right? When the work is finished? Something, I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, being the American, it will be 185.4 feet or something like this. So, uh, yes. So um, you're, not, you're not afraid to tackle a refit. Um, 
no, I like I I like the process actually, um, and uh, it's it's fun. Uh, this has been a little bit of a wrinkle with the COVID. Uh, we could never have planned. Uh, we could never have planned for it, of course. Um, in some ways, the boat will be more prepared for uh, for 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 me and for our customers and for the season because the crew is there now um, and is organizing things. Things. And my chief stew, I think, is ready to uh, paddle away, you know, with her own oar. Um, she, she's so sort of turbo on getting things going. But um, so that part of the organizational structure, which I have certainly been accused of pushing boats out of the yard too early, um, won't be the case uh, with, with, with this broadwater. And what, what do you think? Uh, obviously, you learn things every time you do a refit. So what are what is, what, if you were to advise another owner who was undertaking their first ever refit, what kind of gems could you download into their brains? Uh, well, um, if you're going to do it, if you're going to manage the process yourself, uh, which I did the first, uh, the first boat, I took a sabbatical for about five months and I literally was on, I was on site. Um, uh, but, but the, the other boats I've had project managers and I would just say that, um, there are good project managers, exceptional project managers, and there are not so good project managers. Um, I happen to have, uh, an exceptional one. And if anyone would like that referral, I'm happy to make it, uh, offline. Uh, uh but, 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 um, I've also had the opposite. And so it's imperative, uh, that you have the right people. I mean, uh, you know, that, that goes without saying, except sometimes people can't grow with you. Uh, uh, sometimes people are referred that can't do the job. And, and um, this project has been very fun for me because uh, I have the right human capital within my crew uh, managing the, the program with my project manager. Um, and uh, dare I say it, it's been, um, while quite expensive, not not very stressful. <laughs> so um, I also would attribute that to doing the refit uh, in a pedigreed European yard. So the, the Royal Houseman experience or the heat, uh, heat spit, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it. The Royal Houseman experience so far has been very pleasant from the owners. Yeah, of view. I, I mean, you know, nothing, nothing's perfect, uh, but they have they were very excited to receive this project. They thought I was going to do the project at FedShip, and hell, I thought I was going to do the project at FedShip, but they were very aggressive. Um, and uh, I haven't, I haven't um, minded um, getting more familiar with sailing. Um, and so it was, it was, um, it was a good match, and has, and has mostly a match. So, and so when, so. If all goes to plan from here on in, when do you expect to get on her? Well, well that's, the, that's the point of consternation I have with them right now. <laughs> when, is the exact, uh, when is the exact date? Uh, but, you know, I, I would say, um, let's call it late July to mid-August is when the boat will be on the water um, starting to cruise. Where that will be, I don't know. Um, unfortunately, we've had to give up some some of our repeat customer business because the boat just isn't going to be uh, ready, uh, and people are des have desperately wanted to charter it. So they'll 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 come in the winter or they'll come next summer. Um, but uh, that that's sort of my guess. Everything staying as it is now. Um, as always, the yard want, wants longer. I say no. I need the boat. So we'll we'll see. You might get accused of pushing out of the sheds a bit too quickly again. I don't see how that could possibly be the, the accusation, but I'm sure someone <laughs> will come up with it. So if all goes to plan, uh, you'll get somewhat of a med season and then presumably you'll take her across. Yeah, I think the boat will, um, uh, it, it might visit the Monaco show. Uh, I might be on it there or Houseman may want it. Uh, to demonstrate the, their uh, capacities and and maybe you know uh, um, 
could create some consternation with FedShip, who knows? Um, and, uh, but, but their refit, their refit division has done a really wonderful, wonderful job. Uh, and, and so it deserves to have, um, it deserves to have that exposure and then it, it will cross. And it, it's really in that, the, the winter that I use the boat here, um, because, uh, the, the summer it comes back to the med and it's really, it's revenue producing season for our program. So my, my crew is a charter crew. They're at the top of their game. Um, and while I do think they like me, they probably wouldn't continue to work for me, uh, if we didn't, if we didn't charter because it's what they're interested in. So, and, and it does blunt the trauma of the ownership of this enormous thing. Yeah, it certainly does. So how do you do that? How do you balance the, the kind of the commercial and the personal when it comes to the boat? I mean, do you give yourself s slotted weeks? You say, this is it. This is my time. No one else, even if someone came in and said, well, I'll give you 30% more than the charter fee for that week, would you say no, or would you give in to commercial interest then? It, it would depend on what was planned, but, but generally, uh, I say this about all the businesses that I'm engaged in. I mean, it's a business, and so you want to have a good reputation, um, you need to make uh, this thing is available. And, and so for the most part, certainly during the summer, uh, which we tend to spend on the Chesapeake, uh, here, um, the, the, we, we put together, you know, 10 weeks of charter without any, without any problems. And then I tend to use the boats, uh, on, uh, on the shoulder, um, which is actually, my, I prefer because I'm not much for crowds or, or when it's too hectic. Sure. And is, is your eye ever been turned by a new build project? I mean, is there any, do you think there's one in your future? What do you think? That required a drink of, of just, just Coca-Cola. There's nothing else in there. Um, <clears throat> so I, uh, I gave up. I, I got divorced several years ago. And when I um, got divorced, I sort of gave up the, the fantasy of taking my son um, away for a year. Um, and so... So uh, that's sort of the, the preface to say, yes, um, yes, I could see myself building a boat, but he's, he's nine uh, years old and it will, would probably deliver when he would be uh, graduated from high school uh, and, and we do a gap year sailing um, around the world or, or, or something like that. I mean, that, you know, that, that's sort of a, a plan, all things being equal. Um, so my notion is uh, that we have done what we have with this boat, and it sort of holds us over until um, we, we get to that, whatever that point is. Um, of course, we would need uh, a nice uh, correction in yacht building prices and, and the economy, oh wait, uh, uh, before I could probably strike a deal at a yard um, that I would uh, enjoy doing that build up. so we'll see. I do see a day where I probably go down to smaller boats, potentially, um, but, uh, but you know, for now, uh, this is where we are. That, I mean, there, there does seem to be kind of a reverse trend. I mean, everyone just assumes your boats always get bigger. But it's not often the case. People go big. They maybe they even go too big, and they, then they come down into something with two crew instead of twelve crew, just because they can't be bothered with the hassle of it, or they want to run it themselves, or any any other number of reasons. It is a hassle. Uh, you can't believe all the you know. The, it, it it takes an entire management group um, to, to 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 run all this correctly. Um, and if you think it doesn't, then, um, you, you find out that you should have thought that it did when your accountants sit you down and say, whoa, where did all this go? Uh, so, um, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's complex. Um, but it's, once you get a good team in place, um, and, and that's from the brokers to the, to the managers, to the crew, um, then, uh, then it works pretty well. But then, of course, the crew matures, 
and then it's not as fun because they are your friends too in some ways uh, with good boundaries and um, then you're like well screw it and then you know you start over again I I'm 47 years old uh, and so uh, I, I hope to have a lot of voting years ahead of me um, but uh, there are the future isn't like, oh my goodness, I always have to have this thing. It's, 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 it's fun, and it would, when it becomes unfun, then it, it, it can go. I mean, in, in owner terms, you're very, very young. So let's, if we wind the clock back a little bit. So where did it all begin on the water for you? I mean, have you, have you always been a water baby? or did Yes, you... uh, I, I'm the oldest of five, and I have uh, the, the youngest of five. Um, my 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 youngest brother, who I'm quite close to, is is a mountain child. Uh, he, he, uh, although he he likes the boats, he is a guy who just loves climbing mountains and and doing that. I am a, a water warm um, uh, sort of uh, you know person, and uh, so I mean I grew up r running just little small little boats. We had a, a lake house about 20 miles from the house where we lived, and we, we would water ski and, and, and so forth. Um, and, uh, and so it, boating's just always been in my blood. Never in a million years did I think I could, um, would I ever have such a thing or be able to afford it. It's, it's, it's sort of amazing. Um, but uh, uh, it, it, uh, it, it wasn't a goal, but it was a fantasy. and. Um, and it, it, it's been a lovely one. So when you, the business was going really well and you entertained the thoughts of buying a big boat for the first time, when about was that? Um, uh, about, you know, nine, or, uh, nine years ago, 10 years ago. So you, you uh, packed a lot of experience into that kind of decade. There's four boats in that decade. Yes. Um, uh, Yes, uh, the 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 Westport uh, I owned um, in conjunction. Uh, I owned fifty percent of it with with a wonderful business mentor of mine, um, and uh, we just found that we wanted to maintain our wonderful business relationship, uh, which which ironically enough we had never done any financial dealings with each other. Um, until that boat. Uh, and, um, you know, you put two control freak type A folks uh, in a partnership. Um, we, are, we are very fortunate to, to still call ourselves very, very close friends. Um, and, uh, and I think they were happy uh, to, to, to get out of it uh, as well. It, 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 it is a responsibility for people who care. Um, and uh, when you're used to putting money to work and it returning to you, um, it, it's hard to wrap your head around something, uh, you know, yes, the joke is it's just something that you pour money into, but like literally every movement it makes costs money. But, and even when it's not moving, it's not just the crew, but it's the dockage, it's everything. So it, it, it can begin to, to um, drive you nuts if you let it. And that, so after that experience, you swore off ever sharing a boat again? Uh, you know, I wouldn't, it, it's, it's interesting. Um, my friends, Jim and Cynthia, who I mentioned, uh, I, I, I pitch them every once in a while. Uh, oh, maybe we should own a small boat in common. We we uh, we both love the Bahamas, and um, it, it's and we're both from this the the, the D.C. Virginia Maryland area, and uh, it would be lovely to um, not only see them but 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 share a boat with them so that it felt like it was somehow more efficient. But that's a pure rationalization. Um, but uh, but yeah, we do we 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 we, uh, we bash it back and forth, of course. Uh, he would say, why would I do that when Matt buys these crazy boats and I can just come on them for free? So That's a fair, it's a fair response. It, it, it is. It is. Someday we're going to have to start swapping property for, for boat trips, I think, or something. Yeah. Um, you mentioned sail earlier. I mean, would you, ever, would you ever consider that something with sticks? 
Well, I, I would have said never in a million years. Um, um, but uh, there is something, uh, uh, and I, uh, my, sail, my, my, my sailboat friends are gonna just love this. Um, there is something very special and peaceful about, um, uh, about that experience on the water. And um, my, my neighbor at my house on the Chesapeake is a big sailor and he sometimes, he has a small sailboat, it's 45 feet and he, he takes me out. And sometimes that sort of sailing to me is, is frustrating because it's slow and you don't know whether, you know, I, you, it takes them all day to go like four miles or something. And, um, but, but, you know, uh, these lovely large sailing vessels built um, by, by the alloy, which is what we were on, um, are, are um, majestic and amazing engineering marvels. Um, and to be on something, how big is that boat, Stuart? It's 220 feet or something. Um, oh, yeah, if it's, yeah, it's a big boat. Yeah. Uh, to be on something that big with just Mother Nature propelling it to, to 16, 17 knots, which we saw when we were down there, um, is just uh, very special. And, and when you watch your kid, who my son loves sailing, goes to sailing camps in the summer and um, he's very into this. So, you know, um, I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't ever say no because I've, I've bought just about everything and of course then also traded or sold it, but um, it, it was a very interesting experience. I wouldn't do anything that big, but I could see the, the use for a, a smaller, call it 85 to 100 foot sailboat. So, so over um, in 10 years, you've owned four boats and you've, so obviously you've made a lot of sales brokers happy and you charter regularly and aggressively with a great crew and great boats. So you've obviously made a lot of charter brokers very happy as well. So what's been your experience with that community? Um, and what lessons have you learned? Um, well, uh, so on the, on the acquisition side, um, I, I would say it, it, it's, it's funny. It's a small, uh, I had a friend uh, refer me to another friend who was looking to buy a boat, a small boat, like 40, 45 feet. And he said, well, wh why would I need a broker? And I said, well, here's the thing. Um, boats aren't like airplanes. They're not like houses. Um, they're, they're not regulated yet. There are lots of things that can be hidden. Um, and so uh, surveys can find things, but really no one's on the hook for the survey. Um, and brokers are going to be your best advocate because if they're a good broker, uh, they're going to want the next sale. So they should, so less, less about the thing that's being bought and more about the future of the relationship. And um, so they should be able to steer you away from problems uh, or towards deals. And they, their, their institutional knowledge, the best um, in, the, in the market is strong both about the product and about deals that exist that no one knows about. And so I always uh, believe in, in hiring um, uh, good, uh, good, good opinions. We do it in the companies with uh, advice in the legal world, in the accounting world, consulting on a problem. And, and so I view the best brokers um, to, to be in that sort of professional ilk. Um, and I think uh, what you're seeing overall in the marketplace is a self-selection um, and the weaker folks um, are having a harder time um, uh, making their way. Um, I, I do think that the, the, the industry is changing. I, I, I think it will go the way of, um, can you hold on just a second, my gardener's outside and blowing around. In conclusion, I guess, you know, uh, a great sales broker is worth his weight in gold or her weight in gold. For, for, for certain, um, because they can put together deals uh, that, that um, 
I could never have imagined. I sometimes go, huh? The, you know, when we sold the first Broadwater, it was a three boat deal. Uh, and that would never have been able to happen otherwise. How about on the charter side? <laughs> So uh, on, on the charter side, um, you know, uh, I think fast forward um, t five or 10 years from now, there will not really be charter brokers um, they'll, or they'll be different than, than uh, uh, how it is today. I think the internet, um, y you know, no longer do you go to a broker uh, and say, oh, um, I'm thinking about chartering a boat. Which ones do you like? Uh, you say, I'm thinking about chartering these four boats because I've toured them online and I've seen them online. And um, what do you know about the best crew, which is going to be more important than anything, frankly. Um, and, and so I, I see that sort of changing in, uh, the way the residential real estate market is, is changing. Um, and, and those brokers who are not uh, scrupulous and are, are, are not upfront about things, um, you know, I, I think uh, the transparency will be such that they won't be in business anymore. And, um, you know, that, that happens. I'm happy to say that uh, a lot of the sort of graft and I think the, the, the behind the scenes money of things that that has um, that has, in my experience, gone away. Um, everyone deserves to make money, uh, and everyone deserves to be treated fairly, including, by the way, the the owner. Um, so uh, this is this is something that 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 is uh, an imperative, and and is happening uh, is happening right now. I mean, uh, there are many owners that are being um, uh, there, there's this issue with charters in, in, during the, uh, the pandemic. And believe it or not, uh, the, the contract uh, from the various uh, agencies um, specifically exempts charter brokers' commissions uh, from, from the force majeure cause, cause of, a, of a pandemic. So what that would mean is someone charters a boat for a million dollars and a charter broker is, uh, thinks they're entitled to 100,000 euro, they can try to enforce that uh, charter. Well, it's a poorly written contract and no one should do that. Everyone should be put back to zero, but it is the way the, in, the industry um, it, is structured. There, there are these backward sort of things. So it's imperative to have good representation. It's imperative to have honest brokers and it's imperative for the charter brokers to remember who the ultimate client is, which is their client, and they shouldn't do anything to jeopardize the, uh, the, the vacation of that person or their time. So just to be clear, so, so if uh, a charter was booked, had your boat been out of the shed um, and ready for charters, the charter had been booked, um, the pandemic happens, the charter is canceled, um, the charter broker then says, uh, instead of resetting everything back to zero, the charter broker says, well, I'm still owed a fee on the charter booking. Yes, if the owner cancels the charter, then the owner is, is on the hook for that commission. Even if the charter broker went on to rebook the, 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 the client on another boat. Mm -hmm. um, if the client... If the client, my charter customer, canceled the charter, the, the, the commission is still due, um, but they would have to pay it. And, and I would think that um, that would not be a long live uh, customer relationship uh, in that case. So, Well, it's, I guess it's, I mean, it's not a massive community, is it? The owner no. community, there's very few of you, really. Um, so the maintaining of personal relationships is absolutely key to you know the success, the ongoing success of your business. So I guess it's in everyone's interest to make sure everyone walks out of the relationship as happy as it's possible as possible to be. And and it's important to remember that ultimately, um, people are very decent and good uh, in 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 this world generally, I believe, and uh, and and then in the community. And for those people who aren't, 
there will be consequences. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, 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 how, uh, that's how things should, should work. Well, Matt, um, I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Hopefully see you soon. Yeah, definitely. Keep me, keep me in the loop. Will do. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>